Please remember to subscribe, click like, and click the bell icon for all the notifications on this channel. Yennefer and the mages reinforced the, the strategic keep of Sudden Hill, aiming to prevent Nifgardian forces from invading the rest of the Northern Kingdoms. Having escaped from Sintra and searching for Ciri, the girl who is his destiny, Geralt encounters a merchant burying bo the bodies of dead refugees. He defends the man from undead monsters, but is wounded and loses consciousness. Ciri is awakened by the woman she met earlier and discovers the dead bodies of her harassers around her, killed in gruesome ways. The woman takes her to her farm, and if guardians launch their attack, with both sides utilizing magic and inflicting heavy casualties on each other. The Seiya attempts to talk down Fringilla, but Fringilla disables her. Vilgefortz fights Kahir, but loses and is thrown down a hill. Geralt walks, wakes to find himself on a merchant's court part en <laughs> route to the man's farm. When Vilgefortz wakes up, he kills a northern sorcerer, revealing himself to be a turncoat. When the Guardian soldiers begin to overrun the fort, Yennefer channels a massive stream of fire and seemingly disappears. In his delirious state, Geralt dreams about his mother, Vicenna, who abandoned him as a child in order for him to be made into a witcher. He later arrives at the same farm, and upon hearing the woman talk to the man about Ciri, heads into the forest. Seeing a vision of Geralt, Ciri wakes up and wanders into the forest, where she and Geralt finally meet and hug each other. This is the uh, synopsis of the final episode for season one of The Witcher entitled Much More. Now I thoroughly enjoyed this episode. I really, really believe that this has to be, to me, the best episode of this season. It had everything, you know, not a lot of Geralt, but it didn't need that kind of see where Geralt's at. He was injured by those monsters, whatever you want to call those things. They were pretty fierce. They were pretty ferocious. You know what I mean? They took out all those, uh, those you know, people. You know, that one merchant found them, you know. Geralt had to, you know, he confronted a guy and he assured him, no, I'm here. I'm giving them a, a proper, you know, burial, a proper, you know, respect for them, you know. You don't want to, he doesn't want to see them strewn all about, right? You know, and... So, you know, we get to see, you know, Yennefer and the mages uh, battle the Nifgardians. And I was just saying to myself, I go, Nifgardians are really, really not that great. In a sense that, yeah, they have that great armor, their fighting skills, but is Fringilla the one that gives them that type of bravado? Because if they got rid of her, I don't think they would have really even lasted against the mages but you know we see Fringilla we see that she's using these I guess that they're, they're mages too that you know this one that was building up this fireball and you know shoots it in the air and then we see uh, you know, Yennefer wake up just in time to see it coming down and then she uses that I'll call it the force you know <laughs> and she just throws it away and then Fringilla's like go again and then the girl does it this magician or whatever you want to call it, this this mage, I guess. And then she just shrivels up and it's just like a black, you know, sooty type of, you know, what's left of her just collapses to the floor, you know. You know, to me, really, you know, the, my, my favorite part in this uh, episode was when we see, you know, Cyrilla, Siri, and Geralt finally meet. It's like, long time coming. I thought that, you know, he gets there, he hears the lady. It turns out to be the wife of the merchant. And she's saying, you know, that we got this girl, found her in the forest, something, something like that. And, you know, and then it kind of, you know, he's all, he's all delirious. And then he's like, oh, he must be talking about you know, Siri. And I thought that it was one of those things where 
he just missed her and she's gone. But she had a vision that he was going to be in the forest. And that's probably what it was that he went after her. And there you go, you know. And um, I really, really like it's one of those things where it's like I love, I love the actress that plays her. Uh, also, the one, of course, I want to play Jennifer also. And of course, uh, Geralt, who's played by uh, Henry Cavill. There's that one scene when she was lying in bed. And the lady was talking to her about how if she were to die tomorrow, you know, she has everything, you know, a, a headstrong son and a father who is the same and everything else. Have a roof over her head, you know, and all that stuff, but she doesn't have a daughter. Like she thinks she feels that Siri is like a daughter to her. But uh, the one thing when you saw her, it had like the camera was on her. And I don't think I've ever seen her look more like beautiful and I, I don't know what it was. It was the, the camera, the, whatever they used, the, the, the angle. But she really is a, she's a beautiful girl, of course. But it's like that, the way they captured her was like, wow, that, that was like a really a, a way to kind of to show her, you know, like, and I'm like, going, that's, that, that was kind of like, you know, it's weird because it's like, you've always seen her. Enough. But I guess it's because we've always seen her real city and real um, like dirty and kind of all really just worn out and worn down because of what she's going through. But I guess being with the lady, she was able to clean up and look, you know. So I, I think, I guess that's what it was, or it's just the way that the camera captured her. But, you know, I'm going on about this, but this is one of those things that I, I noticed uh, and I liked the scene, you know, because it really was something like she never, you know, she she didn't see, she, I guess I'm not, I'm trying to wonder when, when she lost her mom and her father, they were on a ship and I guess, uh, no one was uh, found, no survivors. The ship never was found again. And I don't know how old Siri was when her mother and father apparently drowned or apparently went down with the ship. But, uh, you know, so it's like this lady is trying to be, maybe not a mother, but maybe just trying to be a, a mother figure to her so that, because she, she kind of definitely found her by herself and everything, you know. I was trying to help her all along. She found her. She she saw her in the town, and she was trying to befriend her and everything. You know, I mean, Siri even went off with one of her horses, and it's like you know, she still found her. That's weird. But uh, you no, know, let's talk about the mages. The mages men are really something. They all have their unique, different kinds of powers. You know what I mean? You know, and there was that one where she's able to put her hand on the ground, and it sprouted up these mushrooms and had like poison come off of it, like some mist. And then, you know, they're trying to take out the Nif Guardians as much as they can, and it took out a, quite a few of them, you know? And then you see, uh, of course, um, you know, Yennefer, who's able to talk to every one of the mages, you know, through her mind. And even found out that she was even in, um, what do you call it, his head too, um, you know, Geralt. You know, Virgilla was able to take out, or at least disable her for a little bit, you know, uh, Tessia, the Tessia, I should say. And um, I was wondering if, like, the, the one girl that plays Virgilla, was she one of the girls that was with, you know, Yennefer in the beginning when they were being trained by Tessia, you know? I mean, that one, she was that one who was trying to do her powers or something, she's trying to balance, like, you know, and it was, it was at the flower, keep it from, it was something like that, and then her hand shriveled up and got skeletal. You know what I mean? Um, could have been. But she's very powerful. And like I was saying, you know, if you got rid of her, you know, the Nif Guardians wouldn't even be, I guess because going up against the mages, they're not gonna be, they're not gonna be really anything, but with Fringilla on their side, she was able to kind of like, make up for their lack of trying to penetrate the fortress there, the, the castle. They were able to get in there, and then they had that one girl who was causing all these like vines and stuff like that to kind of intertwine, to kind of make a temporary uh, you know, door because he knocked down the, the previous one. And they were able to get through it. The guy had like a, a torch and pushed it in and it kind of burned her. She fell back. And of course, like, you know, that thing was going to burn everything up and everything was going to probably wither away and go in. They had these little things, these little, uh, we call those worms or whatever those things were, that 
one of the one of those uh, you know fringillas uh, mages, I say, comes in with uh, something, and this shrivels up, and then that person shrivels up and just collapses, and then drops that thing, opens up, see all these little liquid type. Uh, it looked like uh, you know something like Terminator with those liquid, uh, you know what I mean, like the liquid Terminator, you know, T uh, T one thousand, right? And it's just, but it looked like worms, and they they were because uh, this girl named Sabrina and two uh, boys. They were up to something. Like she had those those, those uh, vials, and you didn't see until they were starting to like they dropped those things, and it caused like these explosions. And you see something coming out of its ear. Reminds me of Star Trek, you know, with those uh, those uh, what call those boar worms? What do you want those? What are those worms? Those things that they call them? Put them in their ear, and then they were able to control. Uh, Khan was able to control. Uh, who was that? Uh, was that was that Chekhov? Chekhov and this other guy, uh, played by Paul Winfield, the, uh, the African American actor, the one who played the other uh, you know, Star Trek uh, character. You know what I mean? And I said boar worms, but that's what it's like. That's Flash Gordon. You know? So, but it was like worms like that. But this one was like even, and they were controlling them, and that's the reason why. He's even, he didn't even the girl also be like stabbed. Um, you no, know, uh, what's her name? Uh, Jennifer. And. Jennifer, you know, wasn't as wasn't bad, but then when the girl collapsed, it fell to the floor because they got they were on top of the tower, and when those kids um, dropped those things, they ex they exploded and they got knocked you know knocked out of the, the top area of the tower, and as he fell to the floor, Jennifer was able to land Matrix style. I guess the other girl didn't have that training. I don't know, <laughs> just you know, and you know she fell flat on her back and she was telling her, "I'm sorry." She was apologizing to to Jennifer. Jennifer knows that she, she she it wasn't her, you know, that did it. You know, she knew there was something up. But um, we have that, and you know, there was a you know she was trying to look for uh, Taseya. Taseya was of course disabled by Fringella, and she found her, and then Fringella told I mean not Fringella, but Taseya told her, you know, that pretty much let everything out, you know, you know let the chaos you know, go, let it, let it just take over. You know what I mean? Cause she was telling her to bottle it up. She even said that to that guy was the guy, uh, what was the name of that guy that, the, the guy kind of turned on uh, his uh, fellow, um, what I call it, his fellow mages. And he killed one of them. What was the guy's name? Let's see here. Vilgefortz, okay. Yeah, Vilgefortz was, uh, you know, he went one on one with um, Ahir. He's a guy that's the leader of the this Guardians. He's a pretty, he's a, he's a pretty uh, intense guy. He's a guy that definitely knows his shit, and he's like a real great leader. He knows ins and outs and what to do situations and stuff like that. I thought that guy, one guy that kept complaining about that guy. I thought he was gonna kill him because he kept saying, "Oh, we can't do that. We gotta do this. We gotta think this through," you know. And, even like Fringilla had patience. Like I thought she was gonna do something to him, you know, and did it. But they were fighting, and uh, the guy Gilgaforce had a had a way to just pull, you know, sabers, swords, whatever, what have you, out of his uh, you know holster there. And then it got to the point where he couldn't do it anymore. And I think it's because he was injured. He was like cut in his mouth or something, and he couldn't. Do it. I guess he has to be at 100 percent or even close to that to be able to do that, you know. Because I guess it takes a lot to. And these guys use their powers. And then uh, when that happened, he was weakened, and uh, Kahir just kicked him off the hill, run down. He kind of hit his head on a you know, stone or some kind of thing. He wakes up later, and he's groggy. He's weary to see a, a guy that's on his knees and kind of near death. And he said something, and Bilbo Force just said, just, you know, took that, whatever he had that weapon, and just, you know, smack, you know, smacked him across the side of his face and knocked him down. And I'm going, okay, he knocked him out. That wasn't enough, folks. He just raises it above his head and he starts to make smashes about two times, three times. Now that's it. And pretty much turned on his own mages. For a minute, I thought it was that king dude, the guy that said that, you know, they think that they can win. Remember, he was the guy. And, uh, you know, I don't know what's up with that guy because he did meet up with her later on. And he kind of was off, off to the side, kind of his way of thinking like he wasn't really there so i don't know what's gonna happen with that guy like if he's gonna continue to act like 
he's with them. I don't know what his deal was, but he turned on that one guy, so I don't know what's going to happen with him and the others. So uh, this episode really, um, you know, from with because people were talking about, you know, when I watch videos, I watch people who watch The Witcher 2, and they bring up stuff like people complaining that Henry Cavill isn't, in, in, you know, the, witch, uh, the Geralt isn't in this sh show enough. I'm thinking, these are the same people. Trust me, people. Trust me, folks. These are going to be the same people that if Geralt was in this too much, they'll complain. Oh, it's too much Geralt. It's like with The Walking Dead. I was thinking about this earlier today. The Walking Dead. People complain that there's too much, you know, walkers. Too much zombies. Too much of that. We want character-driven shows. Let's, le let's learn about Rick. Let's learn about... You know Eugene and all these guys, right? And then when the writers are going, okay, we'll do what the we'll do what the fans want. And then what do they do? Oh, I hate this. They need more walkers. How come the walkers aren't here? Are you guys ever satisfied? You know. So it didn't surprise me when people say that about this. But he's in it enough. It's like it's not about just him. You know, he's in a world surrounded by different things going on. You got the Nif Guardians. You know, pretty much trying to take over the entire country, entire countryside going from place to place. You know, you got Yennefer who's continuing to find her way, you know, and find her destiny and what it is, her legacy. She, talk, she talked about that earlier where she doesn't know, she doesn't have no family, nothing to leave behind, but you know, Tessa told her, that's your destiny. And you know, the fact that let the chaos go, let it, let it take over. She was able to, you know, you know, send fire from her hands, from her fingertips, and she was able to burn out everybody, all those uh, t uh, Nif Guardians, right? And then the fire went around to Saya. And she was like amazed. She was like, kind of like, whoa, you know, like what's going on, you know? She probably thought that she, she actually screamed like she thought she was going to get, you know, sp you know, turned to ashes. If you will. But going back to that, you know, you have all these things going on, you know. We have Siri, you know, who he has to find because that's his destiny. That's who he's tied to. And everything in this show, this show is really amazing. You know, I'm glad that uh, I was turned on to this, you know, and learning about it. And I checked it out because I probably wouldn't watch this show because... You know, people talk about Game of Thrones. People talk about Breaking Bad. People talk about all these shows that I don't watch, but I know they're great shows. You know, I know that they're awesome shows. You know, even uh, The Walking Dead, you know, I didn't watch like the first, the first show and I still haven't watched the first episode ever. You know, it's weird. I started watching it like afterwards and, you know, got, you know, what's all we go inside? Sopranos. Before I even watched the entire six seasons, I was watching the clips and all that stuff. And I finally started watching it. It didn't ruin it really because it made me look forward to those scenes I know they're coming up. So it's like that, you know, it's like, it takes someone to kind of let you, you know, if you're watching a YouTube channel and then they talk about it, you go, oh, you know what? And I even watched the, you know, the trailer too. That's also a thing that kind of piqued my interest, but then there's somebody that I watch and this person is, just loves The Witcher. And I'm like, well, I'm gonna check it out, you know? And I did and I'm glad I did. You know, because yeah, you know, Henry Cavill is one of my favorite actors, but I wouldn't have watched it even if him and him. It's just, just simply because it's like I've done that with a lot of people. It's like if I don't, if I look at something and I'm like, I don't know, you know, I don't know. But it takes, you know, people. It takes the interest of, you know, channels and, you know, is you know, and people out there that like a show and they convince you, like, okay, I'll check it out, you know. But you know, but I haven't even seen. Um, the movie man from uncle and i keep telling being told by this certain uh, youtuber to watch it you know it's it's good it's a great it's a great movie and i and i love the uh tv series you know it's an old series from a long time ago and they said that he was great in it it kind of showed you what it would be like if he was james bond and anyway you know i'm kind of going off the road and going up the that hill when i should be going straight ahead you know but uh yeah, I really liked the episode. The, the entire series was great. This episode, the season was, uh, you know, it's really, it was great. I really uh, enjoyed it. And, uh, you know, we see, like I said, we see um, 
you know, Siri and Geralt, hugging each other as if they're long lost friends that, you know, got separated and back together. But it's because they know that their destinies are intertwined. So it's kind of like a relief too, especially when she hugged him, it was a relief. And you even see it in Geralt's face, like he's very just, you know, kind of let, let that, let it out kind of like finally, you know. So what's going to be the next season? I mean, even uh, at the end of the episode, you see that, you know, you know, it says to a, to a point, it goes, you know, the season will, you know, the, you know, the show will continue at that type of a tagline at the end, something like that. But, but, you know, I'm just, I'm just paraphrasing because I can't remember at the moment, but yeah, that's what it said. So, and I already knew, and I'm sure everybody that's watched the show knows that it's going to be renewed for a second season, depending on when it's going to come back, more, more likely maybe later this year or maybe even early next year but uh i'm looking forward to it and i can't wait for it to come and especially knowing that yennefer not only the you the uh the coming together of uh siri and Geralt finally coming together and you know now they're together and i i guess he should, he's gonna start training her um and yennefer finally fully realizing her powers and just letting the chaos go like to say i told her and what about Nif Guardians? Are they going to continue their rampage or are they going to have to lick their wounds and try to figure out what they're going to do next? What's Fringilla going to do? You know, I mean, I thought she she, was, she, she, she killed uh, Taseya, but uh, I guess not. So maybe Taseya is going to regroup and she's going to try to, she was trying to get her to, you know, to come back to her and to, and to, you know, but she didn't want it. Fringilla didn't want it. Um, but anyway, that's my, uh, my thoughts and my review of the final episode of season one for The Witcher. And it's, uh, it's what the title, Much More. And that definitely, you know, that definitely had something to do with it. And it, it, it was like something that was you could easily say about, about uh, you know, the mages storyline, the, uh, what the, um, Geralt, and also Geralt and uh, Ciri. So that's a perfect uh, title to this last uh, episode of uh, season one. And uh, for those of you who stopped by and uh, picked out my video, I appreciate it very much. And I appreciate those of you who've been watching this um, series of uh, videos I've been doing about The Witcher. Hopefully you'll continue on with me when I start again, when the season comes again. And uh, again, for those of you who stopped by, I appreciate it. And in closing, as always, take care.